This is the Outliers Edge podcast, where we champion the leaders who are shaping the next era of humanity by taking them to the edge of their comfort zone so that they can lead us to the edge of what's next. I'm your host, Niyama Ashang. Let's do this. Hello there, and welcome to the Outliers Edge podcast. I'm your host and founder, Niyama Ashang, and we focus here on championing the leaders who are shaping the next era of humanity. Today, I have the opportunity to have an amazing conversation with Jeru Bilamoria. And in this conversation, we're going to continue to explore some of this, the topics that fascinate us right now uh, and, and really just be in a conversation uh, around that. Jeru, it's a, a real pleasure and honor to have you on in this conversation. It's good, good to see you here today. Thank you very much, Niyama. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Jeru, I love to, uh, you've had, you've had a, a storied um, journey so far in terms of making an impact out in the world. I know that they, like you've, you've had a series of different uh, ways that you've, you've gone out into the world and, and brought, in, uh, brought in change. And I'd love to just start off here with just giving us a bit of, the, of your past external journey. Um, and then we'll focus on some some of the the like the topics around where, where we're looking to go right now. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, just about your story and, and the way that you've been making uh, change over the years? Yeah. Um, so thanks, and I'll try. Uh, so I think uh, when I say my story, it would be much more the story of everybody who's around and who's helped make it. So I'd say it's more our story mm-hmm. of all the people who have helped shape. But um, I started with social change work when I was very young. It started with uh, my mom was a social entrepreneur herself and an academic. So I guess I was just following her footsteps much, much more. Um, Moving to enterprises, actually. um, So I've worked in communities in India. I've worked with uh, different types of settings. In the US, I actually worked with homeless men. And then when I get back, I'd say my first social enterprise officially worked with twinning children from rich schools to poor schools. And I thought that was really important to bridge the class divide and to bridge the class. And that's something which evolved later into an organization called Aflatoon. And I'll talk about that later. Um, the other was Child Lang India, which started with responding to the needs of street kids. And it just started with kids wanting to have a phone number where they could call when they were alone. So um, it started with that. Um, that moved into a global movement and child helplines are now in 150 plus countries, responding to more than 10 million calls annually. Um, the other uh, Aflatoon, which is the program is now in a hundred and I think 17 countries look catering to over 16 million children and it started as of course twinning but has moved into social and financial education for children across the world across all and my latest hobby horse as I say is Catalyst 2030 which totally inspires me which is a network of leading social entrepreneurs from across the world who recognize that they cannot work alone but together they can accelerate impact so it's a lot of different things which i have done across you know it, it really is and I, I there are a few things here you're fine with me in conversation i find like the words that we use are just really important to me uh if i was going to say that my, my vehicle of change in the world it's conversation i'm like it's free everyone has access to it and like you know and if you're just willing to to slow down and listen you can actually hear and and a lot and being heard actually has a big impact as well so as you're saying things here um i'll probably like just like love to explore a little bit more about some of the things that really like strike me and let me up as, as you're as you're saying one of them i just really appreciate that in the very beginning when you made that distinction between like my story and our story you know and and, and the journey that um that is not just yours alone um, and it, it really, to me, just, I felt myself actually opening up into the conversation, just, just in the space of, oh, I'm not, I'm, like, this doesn't have to be a solo journey. In fact, uh, if it is, I probably won't be able to get to react to be able to create the impact uh, that I'm looking to have. Uh, I'm kind of curious for you, just like, when you think about 
create an impact alone versus creating it with others and such like what are some of your philosophies what are some of the ways that you go about thinking uh, about really being able to impact change beyond yourself so i i firmly believe that no one person can impact change alone um all of us are just to drop in the ocean of humanity so i think but every drop counts because if you know it's several hundred drops which fill a bu bucket and I don't know how many drops which fill an ocean. So I think everybody counts and you do your bit, recognizing that it's just your bit and you can't do it alone. So I think that's one main philosophy which is there. Uh, and that's been a factor. So I never think I can do something alone. It's always with everybody. It's the team you work with, it's the partners, the stakeholders, all of them are passionate and committed. And whomever you work with, I always believe that there's goodness in the person you're working with. So everyone wants to create positive impact. Everyone wants to do so there's always some good in someone and it's finding that and building on that. So that's one really, really important philosophy in my life. And the other is I always say we have five fingers five fingers are not the same, but we need all five fingers. So everyone is different, but we need the skills of all of them to make it happen. And then the third philosophy is you have two ears and one mouth. So you need to listen more and speak less. And if you do that, then you'll be really able to listen to what people want and try to do that. So across my work, I think these are my three very simple guiding philosophies. Thank you for that. It's like that element of of listening and and meeting people's needs seems to be something um, that is that kind of like guides the way that you get things that that things come to life with you. Uh, one of the things that was really interesting to me was when you said like my latest hobby horse, uh, and you talked about uh, Childline India just starting from kids ha just like have needing to have a a number to to call, you know, and 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 in both of those elements there when, when you put it that way there's a lightness to this there's a, there's a there, like there's tremendous in, impact you're in 170 countries with this aflatoon but there's still like a lightness in which you carry and I, I was really curious about like being able to bring that kind of um that kind of perspective to the work that you're doing how, how has that like been uh important in how's that like impacted the work that you do or how you go about getting things done mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I honestly don't think it's something which is uh, um, so major. And I maintain mm. I'm just a drop in the ocean. And that's where it is. And whereas I'm very, very, uh, when you work, I'm very clear, you need a strategy plan, you need operations, you need to be very systematic to get things done. So not saying you can take away and just la 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 and things will happen i'm not saying that but at the same time one has to listen to what people want be it my street kids or be it the social entrepreneurs and catalyst it's listening and working with them and co-creating and always remembering that it's when you do things together when you collaborate it's you can achieve much more than yourself and just enjoying life so like I, I would love to explore a little bit more about Catalyst 2030 and and this co-created in collaboration uh with, with others. Like you're speaking about something that's like really near and dear to my heart, actually. Um one one of it just being like a uh a collection, a collective of other of others who are um also choosing to to make make their impact out in the world, choosing choosing to work together. There. And I think that's the thing. There's there's an element of this here. I'm right. I'm recognizing even my language because it's very it's it's very telling for me as as to what are the viewpoints that I look at when it comes to to impact and, and and getting things done. So I'm like, oh, in this conversation, I think I still have a a more of a individual mentality where maybe people are coming together as opposed to truly what I feel like you're saying, which is like truly being a collective, truly uh, collaborating with one another and such. So. I would love to just explore that further. I would love to leave this conversation with a different point of view or a diff or more expansive way of looking at things. I, I'm realizing that would be really meaningful. So, can you tell us a little bit more about? Um, can you tell me a little bit more about Catalyst 2030? Um, like, like what is it? What what drives it? Uh, why did you choose this as your next hobby horse? Um, 
well i think it didn't i didn't choose it it chose me uh, again catalyst 2030 is a network of leading was started by a network of leading social entrepreneurs and all of them who came together to who have achieved amazing personal impact but realize and recognize that to really accelerate the achievement of the SDGs, we had to break silos and we had to come together. So I would say it's the collective vision of a lot of amazing people um, who are there. And the way Catalyst works is uh, we actually work on a set of values and principles. And our so it's a very values driven movement and one of the key values which we have is generosity of spirit so of course we have respect for people planet etc but it's that people who come in come in with the generosity of spirit to sort of take it beyond their own work to the collective work and the collective impact that is there and with that, they are entrepreneurs, so they are humbly audacious and set the boldest, wildest goals that can be set, you know. So I think that's the value framework which comes with Catalyst. And then another major thing which comes with uh, Catalyst are the principles which guide us. Where basically we have a way where we convene as honest brokers, so it's not as if I know everything and I'm telling you, but it's like I said, my five fingers philosophy, where everyone's different, but we come together and we convene together. And because of our equal convening power, we actually co-create different things. And uh, we are able to co-create and take that forward. And as we co-create and take forward, uh, we are able to have new ideas, new projects, new things. And through that, we can accelerate the change. We start speaking common language, understanding each other, and it reinforces our value system. So I think it's really building and leveraging the power of the collective based on common values and principles. You say that there's, uh, it, it makes me think here around uh, breaking the silos and, having, and, and, and really working together. What, like when you, I'm, I'm curious, like when you see these entrepreneurs come together in this space here, um, I'm imagining based on what you said, that like they, that they, that they've come in, they've had their own personal impact in the world and they believe in being a part, like, like being a part of what Catalyst 2030 has to offer. Um, what do you th what do you find is one of the areas that's like um i guess one of the catalysts within catalysts that allow this to that allows this to take place if your mindset has been it uh i'm leading it's my it, like I, i've been the one that's been bringing up bringing this forward i'm supporting others and now i'm being met in support with in a co-creation with others yeah i think People, when they come in, and this is what I've heard also, that people, when they come in, may not just the co-founders, but the others who may have come in, um, they come in saying, okay, what's in it for me? But soon they realize that I'm not here for what's in it for me. It's for what is in it for the collective good. And then the mindsets change and people try to help each other and then they are able to take it forward. So I think there is this mindset shift which happens from each other. It's peer-to-peer -peer learning. It's people sharing. It's just being together, you know. I'm curious here because, well, firstly, I, I do I do know there's there's a, there's a big part of me that that's all, like when you're explaining this, I'm like, wow, this is exactly um, I understand the value that that comes in in, in from this place here. Um, the the place that I'm I'm curious about with this is like I'm curious about like your when you look at collective leadership. It seems to me that like there's a way that you think about leadership. There's a way that you think about um, impact that that does expand just collaborating. That there's there's you talk about co-creation. It doesn't feel the same as as collaborating. And I'm really just I'm really curious about how you look at. Is there a distinction for you between co-creation uh, co and collaboration and, and and I think for me, uh, you collaborate to co-create, but we actually take it a step further. Mm -hmm. We say we collaborate to co-create to 
create catalytic change. And catalytic change is really the accelerated change which comes because of the power of the collective. And I think that's what we are really looking at. Because if each individual does it, it's incremental. But when the collective does it, it's exponential. And I think that to me is what catalytic change is about. And that's what is different. And that's where the power of the collective really leverages and takes forward. As a, as am am as I a, making sense to you? So Niamh? to to me, you absolutely are, because uh, I, I I feel that you're speaking what's been on my heart that I've almost like hidden behind or walked around in, in, a, in a number of different ways. Uh, this the, We were talking earlier about like, who do I serve and what's Outliers Edge about? And I chose the word outlier because they tend to be amongst the population, but they're a bit isolated in, in the work because they end up being maybe one of the only or one of the first or one of the few in most of the things that, that they do. Uh, and one of my charters in life is to, is to bring together these outliers to see what could happen if, if, you, uh, if you're able to come together and, and into a space, share, um, exchange ideas, be able to, to, if you talk about the five fingers, I totally get that, where it's like, everyone has their skills. I wonder what would happen if those skills were brought together, mixed in, and the areas where someone else was weak was someone else's strong point, and we could just keep growing from there. So I'm a bit afraid that like, I understand too well <laughs> what it is that you're saying, because there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of synergy in that. There's a lot mm -hmm. of synergy in that. Um, so I, I am going to, I think that's why I'm choosing to like, just break down a little bit with, with like the, the individual components of it. So I'm hearing you say that, like, there's a real focus on catalytic change here. Um, and the catalytic change is is the change that happens not just from an incremental element, but like real exponential change. The uh, there's, there's, I'm imagining this world. I'm ima I'm imagining a world that has that is like supported through catalytic change. And um, actually, I think in this moment, I'll really be curious about like the world that you see. What's like like as we are out there building and working in more collaborative and more co-creative environments, as we're, as we're working toward catalytic change, what's the world, what do, you, what do you see being possible for the world or the way that we, uh, we, we interact with one another um, as a result of this? So if all the outliers to say that you interview and all the others who feel they are not, if we all came together, then hopefully A, we could actually actually achieve the SDGs by 2030. That means there would be a better quality of life for most people on earth. I think that would be something which would happen. Hopefully we can work towards more peace processes. Um, I think essentially the world would be a better place because then we have the collective power of everyone using their best skills. So for me, if you ask me what's the future, I'd say, instead of having our individual egos at the forefront, if we were able to look at the collective good at the forefront and work together to create that, I think then we would be able to achieve the change we want to. And in that, I mean, it's not just of the outliers, the thought leaders, but I think putting the people who matter, the community right at the center. So if I'm talking about someone who is living in a rural village in Ghana or India and is having poverty, it's fine for you and me to talk, but we don't know what is what, you know? So I think what's really important is getting them to the forefront, listening to their voices and the people who have probably some resources, expertise, knowledge work with them to see how they can have a better quality of life. What do they want to visualize the change they want? So for me, if I have to, that's a long way, but summarizing it's really letting people see the future they want and working together to achieve that for everybody. That would just make the world a much nicer and happier place, you know? I think, I don't know. I, that's my thing. Uh, I'm, I'm in alignment with it. And as you're, as you're saying this here, I, I feel I'm seeing just how um, 
how much an integrity this element of co-creation and collaboration is. So it's not just in the environment of uh, bringing together uh, change makers and change leaders to to co-create with one another, but then also helping them bring it into some of some of the environments that they they impact change around. So bringing collaboration, bringing co-creation into the local communities on like on the ground and being able to really it almost feels like evoke what is what is the vision what's the, what's the local vision that needs to come to life um or that that and the local needs uh and then serving like serving that with creativity with co-creation uh with whatever resources are available to to actually just fill that need is that, is that right what, what did i miss in there or what would you add to that I think the spirit of sharing across it all mm. and the invisible uh, the invisible uh, thread of we are all the same at one level. So the sense of bonding, the sense of togetherness, that part of it. Mm. Okay. I, I'm, I'm getting a little curious. I like, I like the spirit of sharing uh, and I'm understanding the invisible threads. You mind if I just get a... Just, just go in a little bit deeper on that with you. Sure, go right ahead. Yeah. Um, so when you talk about the spirit of sharing, can you give me an example of something that you've seen or like uh, either through you or any of the, the people that you have worked with or, or championed in the past that, that really encapsulates like a spirit of sharing? Um, I have so many examples. I wouldn't <laughs> know where to start is the right. problem. Yeah. But um, it can go from very small. During the pandemic, all our social entrepreneurs were very busy. And uh, there was an entrepreneur who was delivering uh, food, but didn't have a car. There was an entrepreneur in another city, you know, a truck to deliver to the communities. There was an uh, so an entrepreneur in a city just lent the car and yet another one because it was getting so much help fundraise to get a vehicle which could do that all within the space of a week. And everyone had their own project. So this is something so small and just, you know, one we didn't even think it was important, but it just happened in sharing and collectively trying to make sure that as many people could be fed. So very basic to much more complex where uh, entrepreneurs came together and they said, actually, you know, we need to create a different sort of a marketplace. We need to do things differently. So all the entrepreneurs got together and they had small organizations which they were looking at and marketing and they came together and said let's create catalyst markets which is a collective marketplace where people who have ethical produce who have artisan products who have everything are all now trying to market together and see how they could build a platform where producers have ownership where it's the community which has a say where everything is you know so it's from something very small on a day-to-day -to, -day to a whole shared co-created product you can go on and just see catalyst markets you know, and that was created and it's still in a very, very small beta because we are still trying to see how to make it through and we need money to take it to the next level. But basically it's that coming together to not say, oh, I'm just going to do my, my, my organization, but saying, no, together we can do so much and we can get so much more to our clients and the people we are working with and our community. So let's just do it together. So I think that's where the power of the collective comes. And people who, that's, I'm just giving two small, one very micro day to day to one collective uh, uh, enterprise coming together. And I can go on with many more examples, but you know, time and everything, so. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you. It does, it does help make it real. And, and um, it gets me thinking here, continue to uh, explore collaboration, co-creation in the way that, that you're thinking about catalyst change right now. Um, I know that you, you, to build what you've what you've collectively built, there's, there's an element that's really great with systems. And I'd be really curious about, um, and actually just like also leading teams and organizations to make this happen. So if we took this down in, like into an organization, if, if someone's listening here that is that says, okay, I, I, I am going to, open up and find opportunities to go and 
be in more, in more co-creative environments and get out of the, the silo of what I'm building. Uh, but also within the organization, there's opportunities for this, the way that we think about our organization. Uh, what are some like thoughts or things that, that you have found to work really well to help uh, an, a leader help their team and the culture adopt more of that collective spirit uh, versus a, a more of a siloed approach? But firstly, I'd say for any leader who wants to or any facilitator who wants to, I'd say come and join Catalyst because you may find a home over there. So I'd say that and there are friends and you can learn from them and then there's the whole peer spirit which is there. In terms of organizationally and operationally, uh, Catalyst is not a legal entity. What we call ourselves is a distributed entity. We refuse to register because we said we don't need to because there are so many of our members. So if we need to do financial transactions, etc., we can do it through the network of our members. Mm -hmm. So that's how we uh, look at it. Um, and I think that's where, uh, uh, how do I say, that's where we uh, are uh, in terms of day-to-day -day operations. Our team is located across the whole world. We have multiple, our whole operational style, and I think that's the tip I can say, is don't centralize, decentralize, and believe in the power of the people who can facilitate and lead. So I think that's what I would say. So, uh, our governing council is our members. Mm -hmm. and that's what makes it so amazing. So it's, it's truly co-created all throughout. It's yes, like it, all it's throughout. Founded. Yes, yes. I want to just make sure that if anyone is interested in here, let me just let, let me just let you know the the website is catalyst2030.net to to go and find out more. All right. Well, so I'm, I've been I've been greatly uh, appreciative of this conversation. The what I I mentioned this earlier, but like. Honestly, there's been a lot in my mind around how do we actually do this, and it's really great to, to hear that you that you both have you have the philosophies you you brought it into into world, and it's more than just uh, it's almost like in talking to you, I'm like, oh, the vision of what the, the vision of what I thought could be done is being done in the world, um, and there's and there's a lot to come from that. Let me ask you as we wrap up this conversation, uh, are there any like parting thoughts or anything that you would want to? Uh, to share with anyone that that's on the cusp of uh, bringing more collaboration, bring more co-creation into into any part of their life or in, in their work. Is there anything else that that uh, really strikes you? Be yourself and be open. That's all. Mm. You no, know, I I wouldn't really. I, I don't. Yeah, I think that's what it. Is. And be happy with what you do. I think that's the most important message I can always say. Mm. Be yourself and be happy with what you do. Yep. Saru, I, I am really appreciative of this conversation. Uh, if someone wanted to find out more about um, you and anything else that uh, that you and everyone else that you're working with uh, are up to, where, where would you recommend that they go to find out more? Uh, two websites. One is the Catalyst 2030 website, and they can become members. We also have something coming up called Catalyzing Change Week, where they can listen to all the sessions which are being organized by the amazing entrepreneurs. It's going to be from the 9th to the 13th of May. So then they'll get an idea of everything that's happening. And for me personally, they can always email onefamilyfoundation.one. So these are well, the two you. places. I'm always there for everybody. Thank you so much. I really feel that when you say that, it really, it really does come through. Thank you for being here on in this conversation. Thank you for the work that you've done. I get excited for the things that are that are upcoming as well. Um, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to be in conversation with you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you also. Thank you. Ready to play at your edge? Come join us inside of the Outliers Edge Multiverse, where you have the opportunity to come for 14 days and play in the sandbox of your unique leadership style and take everything about you to its next edge. Go to Outliers Edge slash OE Guest Pass in order to receive your two-week gift.